Um, so do you want to talk about what's been happening with the, the Git transition uh, since the last pause? Yeah, that's a great uh, a great topic. Uh, so for any folks who haven't been following FreeBSD that closely, um, we switched to Git as our canonical repo is sort of the source of truth for all three of our primary project repositories um, within the last uh, year and a bit. Um, so that's the source tree, the documentation tree, and the ports tree. Um, we had been using Subversion um, prior to the migration, and uh, prior to that, we were using CVS. So um, we're on our third iteration of uh, source control tool for FreeBSD uh, over the project's uh, decades of, of history. Um, and our primary sort of goal in migrating to Git was to participate uh, more, more readily in the sort of environment that newer contributors are used to. Um, so uh, in today's world, many developers and potential contributors to FreeBSD are, are, most of them are already familiar with Git. They understand how the tools work. Um, they know how to, to interact with, uh, um, with Git patches and, and projects using Git. So our goal really was to sort of meet them where they already know how to, to operate. Um, and many of the long-term FreeBSD contributors, um, uh, certainly the most prolific FreeBSD contributors over the last while, were already using Git in their own internal development practices um, based off the, the mirror of the Subversion repository. Um, Mark, anything else you'd like to add on that? I mean, I, I think you captured most of it. it. It's like you said, most of us were using Git well before the transition. Um, switching officially has helped streamline things a lot. It helps a lot with um, downstream forks of FreeBSD. So commercial users that maintain a fork or, or downstream projects that maintain some sort of open source FreeBSD distribution. Um, because now they're they're not relying on this mirror, which you know occasionally breaks or or has to be um, yeah, you need needs like a force push to, to clean things up. Um, it makes it easier to take patches from contributors directly. They, they just post a Git branch somewhere, uh, uh, a patch, and there's no kind of manual munging needed in order to apply it. So I think it's 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 not been a revolutionary change. I think day to day it's it's hasn't changed a whole lot for the for the core developers, but uh, uh, it, it streamlines everything quite a lot. And I think it's it's going to enable uh, um, a lot more improvements going down the road. And Joe, um, any experience maybe from the port side that um, that you you've seen from the Git transition? Um, I think in general it's been a relatively smooth transition. There's a, a lot of little features that are nice. So in the past, uh, committers were sort of gatekeepers for the repository, and people would submit patches, and, and then a developer would have to uh, submit, like push that patch to the repository. Now uh, the tools are a little bit more streamlined and the uh, contributor gets uh, recognition. When you do a Git log, you'll see that the person that submitted the patch gets attributed for their work. Um, other than that, I think it's, as Mark said, it's not a really revolutionary change. Um, you get a lot of the nice features from Git like uh, distributed workflows and working offline. Uh, local branches. Um, other than that, uh, I can't think of much else. Other things are changing too. Uh, do you want to talk about the documentation changes and, and things that have uh, moved forward there? Uh, FreeBSD has uh, is well known for having um, good documentation and, and for a long time has put a lot of effort into um, the, the documentation that we provide for the operating system. So the FreeBSD handbook and various guides and things. Um, historically, that documentation was um, uh, was created using a technology called DocBook, which um, is maybe a little bit cumbersome and hard to approach for, for new folks. So um, this year, uh, we've had a migration to uh, reformatting all of the documentation into ASCII doc. Um, and uh, basically making it more approachable and, and more readily editable um, for, for people who want to contribute. Uh, it's from a end user perspective, looking at the document, looking at the documentation on the website and such, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a lot of work that didn't 
doesn't really have a particularly noticeable um, effect, uh, at least the change itself. I mean, the documentation is the same content and looks the same, at least uh, when the conversion was first done. Uh, but one of the nice things about it is, is that um, the tooling allows for some, you know, some improvements from there. So for example, if you look at the FreeBSD documentation website now, um, there's been a, a bit of effort that's gone into reformatting it. And so it, it presents a, um, a much sort of nicer, fresher look now than, um, than what it historically had been. You want to talk about what's going on with like Fabricator and, and such? Sure. So Fabricator is an open source code review system. Um, I mean, it's actually quite a bit larger than that. It, it's kind of got a complete developer suite issue tracker and, and a number of other facilities, but we, we mostly make use of it for, um, for doing online code reviews. Um, so in the past year, I, I don't think we've seen a lot of actual changes. We've been using Fabricator for about, I would say four or five years at this point. Um, but with the, with the transition to Git, it's been easier to build tooling around um, some, some aspects of Fabricator uh, just to make contributor and developer workflows smoother, you know, um, making it easy to uh, upload uh, upload commits as, as reviews and tagging the right people and, and making sure that um, appropriate reviewers get tagged when uh, when a patch is submitted. Um, so I think that's that's really reduced the friction for, for contributors as well. I mean, I, I remember the days of working on FreeBSD before that, usually I would, you know, I'd have a patch and I'd write an email to, to one or several people or perhaps a mailing list asking them to review and, and doing that over and over again was kind of onerous. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's there's lots of different uh, code review systems out there, email-based ones and so on, but I think Fabricator is, you know, while not perfect, has definitely uh, improved the quality of life for, for FreeBSD developers and contributors. Um, and we, we make use of it across, you know, not, not just the source tree, but also ports and, uh, um, and the docs tree as well. Yeah, and one one sort of note to uh, carry on from there, um, the FreeBSD core team has had some uh, ongoing discussions um, uh, around workflow changes that we can build on top of um, the Git transition and uh, code review and um, CI hosted CI tools like Cirrus CI. Um, and there's not an awful lot um, sort of the, to, to show from this just yet, but the discussions are ongoing and we're, we're looking at how to better support uh, pre-commit CI and uh, workflow improvements. There have been some other improvements in FreeBSD that I think enable, uh, enable those kinds of things going forward. Like uh, we're perhaps gonna talk about that a bit later, but uh, it recently became possible to build FreeBSD on Linux and Mac OS. Um, so that really opens a lot of things up because, I mean, a lot of hosted CI services don't really provide, you know, native FreeBSD builders, um, Cirrus CI being, being a notable exception. But um, I think being able to build um, in, a, in a Linux environment is, is quite useful uh, uh, for, for quite a lot of contributors and, and downstreams. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see that continue evolving. Other workflow changes, it's not a workflow change, but I mean, we've, we've also been um, making quite heavy use of, of post commit CI. Um, and, that, and that's expanded quite a bit in the, in the past couple of years. Um, not only do we run the FreeBSD regression test suite, but we, you know, we run with various sanitizers enabled. We run um, Linux compatibility tests, TCP tests, and other kind of specialized things uh, automatically um, when batches of commits get pushed. So those tend to find issues quite quickly. Um, and, and, you know, more often than not, they find them before our users do, which is of course the goal. Um, so I, I, I think that's going to continue to be uh, an important part of, of our development process, even though we'd like to do a lot of that testing before commits get pushed.